my people, we talk about beauty. Uh, one of our greatest phrases is to walk in beauty. The word for that is hojon, and that means in balance. When, when things are in balance and hojon and harmony, there's beauty and there's happiness. So harmony, balance, and happiness all are the same word, hojon. Whenever somebody does something to help influence that or to bring that further or to help create that, either within their own lives or lives of their family or their community, in some way, then songs are meant to tell the story of that so that next generations that come up, when they hear this song, they can tell them the story. This is what happened. This is what was going on. There was a difficulty or whatever. And at this time, then, this is what they did. Because of that, this song was made for them. And so we're going to sing this song now. A sign of wealth for Native American people is how much you can give away, not how much you can accumulate. And in the Native American culture, there is no greater gift than to have a song composed for you. Honor songs are especially significant. The Mayor's Honor Song, a gift from the United Indians of All Tribes Foundation, celebrates the role the Mayor's Office played in helping United Indians realize a decades-old dream building a People's Lodge at the Indian Cultural Center in Discovery Park. Construction of the People's Lodge, envisioned to be the centerpiece of the Indian Cultural Center, has been stalled by a series of legal challenges and bureaucratic setbacks that began more than 30 years ago. On March 8, 1970, Discovery Park was still Fort Lawton, an obsolete coastal defense post. But as plans were being put in place to surplus the Army property and turn it into a city park, it faced its first ever invasion. Led by the late activist Bernie White Bear, a group of Native Americans pushed through the gates, scaled a cliff, and set up teepees in the fort. Their goal was to reclaim a land base for the more than 45,000 urban Indians living in and around Seattle. The occupation lasted for more than three months. The native encampment at the fort, as well as the involvement of celebrities such as Jane Fonda, captured the attention of both national and international media. Congress eventually ordered the city of Seattle and the Native American leaders, who called their group United Indians, to negotiate. In the end, when the city received title from the U.S. government, they offered United Indians a 99-year lease for a 20-acre parcel on which to build an Indian cultural center. United Indians' master plan for the site called for the construction of six buildings to serve Native Americans. In 1977, the Daybreak Star Center opened. It remains the only building constructed thus far. United Indians has remained clearly focused on its mission to foster and sustain a strong sense of identity, tradition, and well-being among Indian people in the Puget Sound area. By building the People's Lodge, United Indians will be able to expand its cultural and educational reach into both Native and non-Native communities. A lot of cooperation and compromise were needed among the tribes, neighbors, and the City of Seattle to move this project forward. We are celebrating today United Indians wanted to acknowledge and honor the role the Mayor's Office played in these mediations. The idea came up to show appreciation, um, to show honor and respect for the work that we'd accomplished together. You can give a blanket and then it's given and it's gone, but something that the mayor's office would have, that the Indian community would have, that would continue on from mayor to mayor and from generation to generation to honor the spirit, the spirit of cooperation. Sanidad asked Arlie Neskahai, a nationally renowned Native American vocalist, to compose the song. When Michelle asked me to, to do this song, I was very honored. And uh, I thought it was a very wonderful vision. I think right now is a real crucial time in the history of both us as Native people in America. Our people are uh, really moving forward and kind of wondering if America is going to uh, try to hold us back or are they going to allow us to step forward. And um, to create a song that uh, encourages cooper cooperation and collaboration between 
uh, different communities. I thought that was a great, wonderful thing. So I asked her, what kind of a song? Because there's all different kinds of songs, different styles. And she said, well, I think I'd like to have it in a powwow style of singing. And she asked for that, she said, because it's intertribal. And here in, this, in the city of Seattle, we have many different tribes. She gave me tobacco as part of that request. It just represents that you show respect to the singing traditions and the, the roots of these songs when you offer tobacco. And I said, I will t I'll take that tobacco then, and then I'll use it to ask for this song. Then finally, when it came time to work on the song, then I took the tobacco outside, and uh, it was kind of a breezy, uh, drizzly kind of evening. And uh, I just talked to the rain, the clouds, uh, the rain people, the cloud people, and said, you know, this person has come to me and asked me for this song. And uh, I really like what she wants to do. And it's a real wonderful thing. And our people in this community, we need something that's going to help us to continue to grow as people, to develop a, a, a strength as a community. A lot of our children and grandchildren are, are lost and are suffering and need to find their way. And so I want to ask all of you to help me. And I have this tobacco here, and I want to give you this tobacco, and I'll put that tobacco down. And I said, this, we want this song, and I, I want you to help me to bring this song so that in some way this vision can be brought forward. With the gift of an honor song comes the responsibility for taking care of the song. Usually, the role of keeper of the song goes to either a singer or a member of the family. The mayor's honor song is unique because it is intended to belong to the mayor's office and not to any particular person. Likewise, the charge of keeping the song will be passed on through individuals in the city's office of intergovernmental relations. The current keeper of the mayor's honor song is David Conrad, tribal liaison for the city of Seattle. 
you have a song and your uh, responsibility is to take care of the song. So um, you're not only taking care of the song, but you're taking care of the person's memory and or the uh, commemorative event. Uh, you're, you pass along that knowledge. And you do that by remembering and knowing about the song and its history and what it was uh, originally intended, how it came about, its inception, or the idea behind its uh, creation. The keeper of the song will also make sure the song is only used by the mayor's office for appropriate occasions. United Indians of All Tribes Foundation or other Native American groups may also ask for permission to use the song as an honor song for their events being held in the city. And when we have gatherings, we'll share the songs to honor each other, to share with each other. So what we wanted to present and to share was we can come together as communities. We can come together to honor each other and show respect and appreciation for the community that we all live in. Seattle is one of the few large metropolitan areas that's named for a great uh, Indian leader, Native American leader, Chief Seelth. And uh, I think uh, it's an honor to our city to have a song, uh, the mayor's song, that helps us to remember that heritage and also the stewardship that we have of this, uh, this beautiful area we're in. It's a great honor that uh, I, I receive initially and I will pass on to uh, future mayors. This song and will start to create this family uh, or community amongst communities. And I think it will, as people come around to hear the song, the people around the song are that community and it will grow from there. And so hopefully more people will know about it and listen to it and listen for it and know when it's there and when it's not there and, and miss it when it's not there.